Tonight, CBS News correspondent Armin Katayan on assignment for 60 Minutes. Last year, we got wind of a story that seemed, on the surface, too good to be true. An amateur diver and part-time treasure hunter had made one of the largest discoveries of sunken treasure in history, a seabed covered in raw emeralds off the coast of Key West, Florida. We were able to track the treasure hunter down at his home in Pennsylvania. He's an unassuming real estate investor by the name of Jay Miskovich. He poured out a laundry basket full of emeralds before our eyes and said he believed they were worth hundreds of millions of dollars and likely came from an ancient shipwreck. What's more, he said, Wall Street investors were backing him and the Smithsonian was buzzing. We set out to get to the bottom of the story, only to discover, just like those pirate tales of old, there's trouble, lots of trouble, with treasure. The story will continue in a moment. Our search began on dry land, on Madison Avenue to be exact, at one of New York City's high-end jewelry stores. Look at that. Where Jay Miskovich showed off a sample of his find. We brought up over 80 pounds so far. You're seeing probably 30 pounds of it here. That is an impressive pile. <laughs> Holy cow. Any question on the authenticity of, of these stones at all? I mean... No. Yeah. No, this is the real McCoy. Gemologist Ed Peterson and owner Greg Quiot could hardly believe their eyes. I think this piece could go to the Oscars. Wow. Is it possible to put a price on something like that? We're only halfway through the first case. <laughs> <laughs> the, the question will be um, what the provenance is. If it's something exciting or, or, um, or sexy, it could add a lot of value to the stone. It could double or triple the value of, of the emeralds themselves. The provenance, the origin that Miskovich had hoped for, was emeralds from an ancient shipwreck, adding potentially tens of millions of dollars to the value. But he had no proof. So gem specialists couldn't put an age or price on the gems. You know, I don't claim to be a gemologist. I mean, I knew what I knew about emeralds is they were green and they, the good ones came from Colombia. That's about all I knew. To help, we enlisted Tom Moses here at the Gemological Institute of America. What this tells us, it's, it's another piece of the puzzle that indicates that the emeralds uh, originate from Colombia. Exactly what Miskovich wanted to hear because for centuries, Spanish, Dutch, even pirate ships had ferried Colombian emeralds across these waters off the coast of Key West. So that's where we headed next, to this haven for drifters and dreamers. A lot of people come here to escape, to lead a double life, so to speak. What, what brought you here from Latrobe, Pennsylvania? Um, it's the adventure, you know, the adventure and the, the sea, the ocean, and, and the lore of the treasure. For years, Miskovich says he went back and forth from Pennsylvania, pouring profits from real estate deals into dive after empty dive. It's a total obsession. I put my life savings into treasure salvage. But by late 2009, the housing market was crashing, and he was caught holding seven properties he couldn't sell. Nearly broke, he borrowed money from friends and kept feeding his obsession. You never really stop believing that you're going to find something yep, absolutely. that is going to change your life. Absolutely. As unbelievable as it sounds, he says it happened in this bar. This is the bar. The one that changed my life right here. He says he met up with a down-on-his-luck diver he'd been friends with for years. His friend claimed he'd found a piece of ancient pink pottery while diving out in the Gulf, but didn't have the money to explore further. He offered to sell Miskovich a nautical map to the site. So what does he say to you that convinces you that this map has any authenticity well, to it? He just said, basically, I found this on the site. When he showed me this encrusted, that's not clean, we didn't clean it, this encrusted piece of pottery, I immediately got very excited because knowing this is absolutely 100% a colonial era piece of pottery. Miskovich says he paid his friend $500 for the map. We wanted to confirm the story, but Miskovich refused to give us the man's name or whereabouts, saying he paid him $50,000 more after finding the emeralds in exchange for signing away all rights to the treasure. Why have the circumstances surrounding the man who sold you the map been such a sensitive and secret part of the story? 
I, I wouldn't say it's a secret part of the story. I mean, we signed a head of attorneys prepared legal agreements. I felt he should be compensated after, after I made the big fine, but it may not even be the wreck that he was diving on. So we're not sure, but it did put us out there that day. On that day, Miskovich and his longtime dive partner, Steve Elslep, followed the map and GPS coordinates to the site of the supposed wreck. They say they didn't detect anything below right there, but while searching about a mile and a half away, they got a hit on their metal detector and dove in to investigate. There was a pile of beer cans down there. We saw seven beer cans. Then he saw something else. I thought it was glass, and then I picked it up, and I realized how large and how roundish these things were, and I'm looking at them, and you're thinking it couldn't be, and then I'm looking, and look, it said it had to be. So I just signaled to Steve. I said, let's go up. Look how gorgeous. They later shot this video at the site. Oh, wow. Look at that one. They thought they'd made a historic find. Just breathtaking. Look at that. That is unreal. Look at the size of that. Over the next two years, they used emeralds like this to convince a handful of investors to put up hundreds of thousands of dollars to fund some 20 trips to the site, where they say they've retrieved emeralds of every shape, size, and quality. We have more than 65,000 emeralds on the surface already. That you've brought up from the, the bottom of the Gulf. Yes, and the, the amazing part is every time we go down, we see a lot of them. I mean, there's still a, a, a huge amount down there. Few people know more about the laws of sunken treasure than Key West attorney David Horan. Miskovich sought him out for help. You must have heard some wild stories over the years. Hey, I found this, I found that. And by the way, this may be one of the wildest. Really? It, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I found a whole bunch of emeralds and amethysts and quartz crystals all over the bottom. Yeah, right. So is he... As he's telling you the story, you're thinking what? I got to see this. <laughs> That's what we were thinking too. We needed to see the site for ourselves. And how many people know the exact coordinates? Uh, three know the exact coordinates. So three in the uh, entire world. Three people in the entire world have the coordinates. We headed four and a half hours into the Gulf to an expanse of open water, a graveyard of ships sunk by hurricanes and pirates. Wow. We are in the middle of ever-loving nowhere. Yeah. Within minutes, they plunged in. Our camera crew was right behind, diving 60 feet below into the murky water. There, sitting proper on the silty bottom, was what we had been promised. Glittering specks of green. Wow. Holy cow. Soon our hands were full of rough emeralds with some amethyst mixed in. I've never seen so many emeralds coming from, from such a small part of the ocean floor before in my life. Marine archaeologist Duncan Matheson specializes in shipwrecks of the Florida Keys. He is helping Miskovich try to solve this mystery, how such an enormous collection of emeralds ended up out here. This is, this is backwards. Normally you find a, a part of the ship and it's wreckage, then you, and you look for its cargo. This time, you were finding cargo, and now we gotta try to find the rest part of the ship. They found other ship wreckage, musket balls, cannonballs, and part of an old ship hull. But also, some of the emeralds are scattered near the metal beams of a merchant ship that sunk during World War II. We went so far as to dig out a copy of that ship's manifest at the National Archives, but emeralds weren't listed as official cargo. You have emeralds next to beer cans, next to musket balls, next to cannonballs, right. next to steel beams. Right. What does that say to you? Well, that's not unusual in the Florida Straits and the Florida Keys and on the whole coast of Florida. We have many times found two and three wrecks even on top of each other. But still no so real answers, No. right? We know that we have remnants of, an, of a colonial era ancient wreck. But what we also have is several other possibilities. The Coast Guard's constantly chasing drug runners through here. Did they, were they smuggling drugs and emeralds into the country and did they jettison them when the Coast Guard was chasing them and throw them overboard 20 years ago? We don't have a clue as to who the wreck it was and how it got there. Holy cow. It was only after diving the site himself that David Horan agreed to represent Miskovich. Mark that, when wow. we get title, 
I want that one. Yeah. <laughs> There's just an unbelievable amount of emeralds. Did Jay understand legally what he had found, what the implications of what he had found? He didn't understand the implications as to title. Possession was, in his mind, 99.9% .9 of the law. But the law is not that simple. We got some amazing stuff today. It's not finders keepers, although Miskovich could have quietly sold his treasure on the black market. Instead, he hired Haran, who then convinced the federal court in Key West to give Miskovich temporary custody of everything he finds. But it could be years before the court awards full ownership. Okay. Until then, Miskovich can't legally sell a single stone. He's emerald rich and cash poor. Jay said a lot of people have told him you should have just taken the emeralds and essentially run, cashed in, cashed out. He had that option and he didn't do it. And uh, could, I, could he be faulted for it? I'm not sure anybody really wants to get into the fight that you get into. It's the trouble with treasure. That's what it is. And there's a lot of trouble that comes with finding treasure. For Jay Miskovich, his biggest trouble came in January, when a company that was looking to market his emeralds sent a few dozen to Europe for special testing, only to discover that some of the gems had been treated with a jeweler's polish or epoxy, routinely used to enhance the brightness of emeralds, polish that has only been in use for the past 50 years or so. This epoxy or polish begs the question, did you put it on the emeralds? No, absolutely not. No. Any idea how it got there? No, no. And the other thing is, it's amazing of, of, of many experts that we've called just in the last couple of weeks. They all say it's 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 almost unheard of to to put to treat raw emeralds. He says he wants to test more of the emeralds, but his investors are drying up. Today, he finds himself nearly ten million dollars in debt to his original investors and lawyers. Conceivably, more than the emeralds will be worth. That's where I live, right here. Which is why he's living like a pauper in his dive partner's spare room. I, sl I sleep in the kids' bunk bed here, an extra bunk bed. <laughs> my, my feet hang out the bottom of it. Adding to his troubles, other treasure hunters are challenging the find, accusing him of everything from stealing the emeralds to buying and planting them. A lot of people have been suspicious of this find and of you from the start, that you're running some kind of scam here. Right. What do you say to that? Those allegations are absolutely frivolous. They're ridiculous. Do you believe, given what you know now, that these emeralds could have still come from an ancient wreck? I think it's less likely. Um, it's more romantic if we could ascertain that it was a pirate ship, whether it was a great sailing ship, which is what we thought we had. But because of the huge number, the value is still going to be extremely significant. I'm hoping in the next dive season, in the next six months, we solve this mystery. I hope we do.